Hello everyone, this is Jotto and welcome to a Spellweaver video. Now, as far as the next couple of videos goes, this one is going to be a deck tech on a slightly slower rage deck. Uh, still largely aggro, but some mid-rangey elements. And then I've got a Trials video coming up at some point, and also a spoiler show coming out tomorrow or the day after for Hearthstone. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into this particular video's subject which is an advanced Zash mid-range rage deck. Now, something about this deck is it is largely untested. I kind of threw this list together yesterday on stream, played 10 games with it, in ranked, lost one, and it was to a hilarious amount of mana screw. Uh, I uh, maybe lost one or two, but I remember losing one particular game, and it was because I missed four divine offerings in one game or something, and I missed two land drops. So, and I would have won if I hadn't missed those land drops. So, as a result, I'm pretty happy with this list. Now, there's a couple things you can tinker around, but we'll go over that towards the end of the video. Now, as usual, I will put in a full screenshot of this. So I'll take a screenshot of this pan, and then I'll also take a screenshot of the bottom here so you can see what the deck looks like on screenshot instead of having to go through the video every time. So, anyway. This particular deck runs Advanced Zash. Advanced Zash is the more control each side of Rage, where the hero power deals 3 to everything, 4 5 mana, 3 requirement, 3 cooldown. It's a long cooldown, very powerful ability, high cost. And the reason it works in this deck is because you're not aggressive enough to make use of basic Zash. And the three board clear actually doesn't clear your own board half the time because a lot of your stuff is hasted or sorry swifted I guess but um, it can attack immediately is late game burn or in the case of Phoenix we'll get to just comes back so as a result you can use a lot of uh, very very resilient creatures and, and fast creatures so you firestorm they play something and then you just play a hasted creature and you kill them that's generally how this goes. It also does 3 damage under Sansa, which is relevant. Uh, sometimes dealing 3 damage to the enemy hero is relevant in general. Also gives you a board sweeper against things like Foundry Engineers. Anyway, so as I said, this deck is not as fast as a lot of the other decks, so it's only running the 4 1 drops. It's running Goblin Warrior or the Lizard Barbarian because the ability to trade matters more than the 2 HP in this particular deck because there's a lot more trading going on. Most of your damage will come in the late game. You're not very aggressive. Aggressive openings are possible. And the reason why I like this kind of deck is because most of the time you're doing all of your damage in the mid game. However, against greedy openings or greedy decks or bad hands, you can still get in that really aggressive start that really punishes those decks. So yeah, we got the Goblin Warrior as a standard one drop there. We have Fia. This is a three of. It did start as four, but it's now a three. And the reason for it is because of the legend rule. The legendary status really does hurt this thing. However, the main reason this is in the deck is twofold. One is to provide a swift threat that gets in two damage effectively. You can attack, sacrifice, get in two damage. Uh, something else it lets you do is actually play Fia, attack them with something else if Fia wouldn't get through, attack them with something else, it gets one energy. Next turn, on their turn, you can fireball them and sacrifice it to get an extra damage out of it. It's very, very useful in that regard. The other reason it's in the deck is to deal with Mono Rage, because the ranged one attack kills Gibber and Ronnie tokens, it kills goblins of all shapes and sizes, deals with other fears, things like that. It's just a very, very good trading creature in that matchup. That's why I started as 4, it went down to 3, because we're running a lot of other ways of dealing with Rage. In fact, this deck is favored in the mirror. And by mirror, I mean Rage, not the mid-rangey thing. Next is Fireball, Staple Removal. Don't really have to say much about this. Uh, staple Removal, and it kills almost anything. Word of Fire, you generally go up to 3 levels, Rage levels, with this deck. It does go up to 4 sometimes later on in the game, for Red Dragon, as we'll see. Uh, but Word of Fire is generally dealing between 2 and 3 and drawing a card, which means it's actually a better fireball in some situations. Can't go to the face, but it draws cards. It's very, very good in the mirror. It's also good against pretty much every deck. I don't think there's a single deck Word of Fire is bad against, apart from maybe Wisdom Dominion, but even then it still deals with Assassins and things like that. Really happy with Word of Fire. Very, very good card. Fireworker, 2 of, just remove artifacts. Works against Helm of Dominion if they don't sacrifice Phoenix immediately. Uh, let's see. 
It is a decent two drop. There's only six two drops in this entire deck total. Uh, sorry, five with uh, with Fia, which means the extra two drops hurt. Like you don't have as much of a curve, so you kind of are removing a lot on turn two as opposed to playing a threat. But it's something. It also lets you go for a decent spark. Although generally, spark uh, games will go from Goblin Warrior into Gibbon Ronnie, which is the next card we'll talk about. Now, I know Blinky has a version of this particular type of deck. Uh, which is a more controlling deck. He actually calls it Rage Control because that's running looters and things like that. I'll link that video in the description if you want to go check out the difference. There's quite a few cards different. I think it's about 10 card difference, which is pretty big uh, when it comes to Rage decks. But the concept is similar. Now, one of the cards he isn't running that I am is Gibber and Ronnie. Now, personally, I really like Gibber and Ronnie. I think it's a very, very good Rage card. It's one of the best, in my opinion. And it just lets you apply pressure early. It lets you trade a lot. It gives you a lot of extra damage in the late game. It's four damage for three mana. It's a lot. And it's very hard to trade efficiently with. It also trades with Protector for the same, uh, well, not mana requirement, but requirements in general. Where they both can have in turn three, and one trades with the other, and it's one of the only efficient ways of trading, apart from Word of Fire. So, very, very useful way. This deck actually deals with Protector better than most Rage decks. There's a lot of ways of dealing with Protector in this particular deck. And Gibber and Ronnie is not particularly bad against it, but it's also just a very, very good early drop. Disciple of Zash is a three off. I was contemplating four, but I thought that was too clunky, and then I tried two, and it just wasn't enough. Disciple of Zash is very, very good against Rage. You notice a trend here. But yeah, it's very, very good against Rage. It also helps with Order. Uh, you actually can beat Order because of Disciple of Zash. You can get Disciple of Zash, and Disciple of Zash, along with Fireball, will kill a Guardian of the Faithful. It's still a bad matchup, but the point is, it gives you an alternative to beating Order. Um, something else about it is with the Hero Power, you can actually burst through a lot of uh, Order stuff, and makes this deck far better against Order than uh, Rage Rush. It goes from a almost unwinnable matchup, I want to say 5, maybe 10%, to something like 40%. I did play against a couple order decks off stream, uh, after stream yesterday, and I lost two of them and I beat one. And I feel like one of the games I lost was a bit unlucky on my part, but the other one was just standard game. So I don't think it's favored, but I think it's winnable, which is important. And Disciple of Zash is just good against a lot of stuff. It's good against Protector, pings off shields, instant speed. Uh, it's... Very, very good at making up little bits of damage against 4 HP creatures, with Karthus and Guardian being the main two. It's just a good creature, especially in a slower deck. Four Fire Blasts. Yes, I'm serious. Uh, normally, you run two, maybe three, because you don't want to be running multiples of these in one hand. However, you just Divine Offering them away, and it's so important to get two in one game against a lot of matchups. Rage comes to mind, because Rage is everywhere right now. But it helps with a lot of matchups. It helps against Order. It helps against Wisdom, against pretty much every single color combo apart from Wisdom Dominion. It doesn't really help against those, but it's a very, very good card. It's a very, very good card, and it also is one of those mirror breakers where if you play against another slower rage deck, which do exist, they're less popular than the Rush Rage, but they do exist. They're a floating around. Fire Blast is the mirror breaker, and it's a very, very good card of that. Next we have Ramgath as a 3 of. Again, the legendary rule means that I will not run more than 3. I don't think running more than 3 is correct in most situations. There are a couple of exceptions, like the Burning Rage deck, because it always wants to be chaining them. Whereas in this deck, you kind of want to chain 2, maybe even no more. But it is a 3-2 with 3 speed and swift, making it very hard to block. On top of that, its activated trigger attacks the enemy hero, before blocks are declared, which means that while, yes, the Goblin can be blocked, you can't block the Ramgath and block all the damage. It will get into damage past the Library Guards. On top of that, you can actually play it on uh, turn 4. I've seen this done before, where you just go 3 resources, 2 mana, and just play on turn 4. Against some decks, they can't deal with it. Uh, against Dominion, it's actually decent. If you don't have a Gibber and Ronnie, for example, it's actually decent. And you can use it against Dominion. It's a very, very hard threat to deal with for Dominion in general early game. And my camera has stopped. Give me a sec. Having a couple technical difficulties today. I actually tried to record this video twice. But anyway. So it's very, very hard to stop with Dominion. Uh, it's just a very, very good card in general. It's 5 damage. Hasted for 4 mana and 3 requirement. It's basically a dragon fire. 
that can be used multiple times. It can't just go straight to the face, but it can be used multiple times. It can be used for trading, things like that. It's actually just a very, very, very good card. Phoenix as a four of. This is the old star creature in the deck. Phoenix is the most powerful pound for pound rage creature in my opinion. It is the king of trades. It will trade with two very large creatures by standards and it will come back and it kills library guards without dying. It uh, deals very very well with protector. They have their protector ruling the board for two turns and you don't really mind. You just play Phoenix and then they can't deal with it because it really does wreck them. Dominion can helm this thing, which is a bit of a worry, which means against Dominion you actually don't want these half the time. A lot of people have been dropping helms recently because helm hasn't been too useful with all the rage rush going around. And in Wisdom Dominion Mirrors it's okay, but it's one of the weaker cards. It just draws a card and kills something, which sounds amazing, but Wisdom Dominion Mirror matches are a bit strange. So as a result, Helm and Dominion has been dropped by a lot of people, making Phoenix better right now. And Phoenix is one of my favorite cards to play with, both in Trials and Constructed. It's a very, very powerful card. Then we've got two more cards. Dragonfire is the big finisher. There are three because four is too many in my opinion. Uh, you don't want to be drawing more than two of these in one hand, otherwise you just never get to use them. So yeah, Dragonfires are amazing. You want two every game if you can. You don't want more than two though, and it's not the only way of dealing five damage, so you really don't need four. You have Ramgaths as well. And it's just very, very good to get past all the blockers. We get past all the blockers, which is very, very nice. Now, I mentioned earlier the comparison between Ramgath and Dragonfire. On paper, Dragonfire looks better because it's unblockable. But in practice, you actually play Ramgath when you have less than four mana a lot just to get in extra damage. So as a result, they kind of balance out. I'd actually say they're about even. If you have synergies with things, Ramgath is actually better. What I mean is things like Massive Assault. However, if you don't, I think Dragonfire comes out slightly on top, but they're both three offs. Last card in the deck, Red Dragon. Now, I'm not sure about this. However, Red Dragon is a very, very good control killer uh, sometimes. Just super late in the game, you just get to murder a control deck with it. The other thing is, against control, you want to go for four Rage levels, because it means Word of uh, Fire actually kills Karthus, which is fairly important. And it's the only way of trading one form of the Karthus, basically. Red Dragon also survives through Firestorm, and is just a very, very powerful ultra late game card that lets you beat these control decks. Uh, in the game I was talking about, what I meant was, um, if I hadn't missed a land drop, I would have won because of Red Dragon Burn. That's basically how I would have done it. I just would have played it and done 10 immediately, and I would have won. So, the thing is that Red Dragon does have a place. I don't think more than a 2 of. You don't even need it every game. Uh, the reason it's a 2 of is so that when you need it, you can draw it. But you don't need it every game. Last thing in the deck, we have just 20 Rage Shrines. I was running Altar of Dragons for a bit. The problem with the Altar was it was just a bad Rage Shrine in 99% of the situations. I played 10 games in a row with it in the deck, and I never activated it once. And the only time I even considered it, I thought it was bad because I couldn't risk discarding most of the cards in my hand. Uh, so, yeah, I really don't like Altar of Dragons. It sounds cool with Red Dragon, but in reality it just doesn't come up very often. And I don't even think it's worth running. Most of the time I had it, I was just using it for rage levels because I wanted to draw cards. Not running 21 Shrines because this is not an ultra-fast deck, which means you can get away with 20. It's a weird paradox, which works in Spellweaver, uh, where unlike in other card games where control decks run more Shrines, in Spellweaver, a lot of the slower decks run 20, and a lot of the really fast ones run 21, because the faster decks need their shrine drops early, and they need to guarantee that they can keep greedy hands with one drop, so they need to hit their Divine Offerings. Whereas slower decks can actually afford to keep slightly looser hands with more shrines and go with it. And it's the same in this kind of deck, so you've got a lot of catch-up mechanics, like Fire Blast, like Phoenix, Word of Fire, things like that. These smooth out your draws, which means that running 20 is fine. Uh, generally, forward fire and some catch-up mechanics is, is what re is required in Rage to run 20 shrines. Now, if you do want to run 21, what I would recommend is having a look at some of the numbers. Maybe uh, remove one Disciple of Zash. Maybe remove Red Dragons completely if you... Well, I mean, if you don't have them, if you don't have Red Dragons, I would actually suggest probably running 21 shrines and... Um, ugh, that's annoying, by the way. Give me... Oh, my God, I actually... This is annoying. This whole inactivity thing is really irritating. <laughs> it comes up in every single video I make. 
Uh, but anyway, if you don't have red dragons, or you only have one or something, I know you get one from a quest. So if you haven't opened a second one, you want to try out this deck as is. Just remove one dragon for a twenty-second, uh, twenty-first shrine, and just run the one dragon for some controlling aspects. And if you don't like the red dragons at all, which in the future I may remove them, I don't know. I haven't tested the deck enough to know whether this is worth it. Uh, just remove the dragons, maybe run 21 shrines, and probably a third fireworker just for some extra two drops. Or maybe a fourth disciple, probably a third fireworker. But we'd have to see. Anyway, so that's the overview on the deck. I will be playing one, maybe two games with this. Um, my aim is to go to 30 minutes. And this deck can have some seriously fast games. So we shall see. Uh, now, as far as other stuff goes, I am doing a trial video at some point. Uh, probably tomorrow or the day after. I actually was going to do a trial video today instead of this deck tech. But what happened was my computer crashed when I was uh, recording it halfway through the draft. Which means that to do another draft, I have to abandon that one or finish it and then do another draft from there. And it was actually on my alt account which doesn't have infinite amounts of gold <laughs> so uh, like this one does so as a result yeah I decided just to wait until I finish that particular trial on stream and then I'll try again tomorrow uh, besides that by the way that alt account ended up uh, was done for an experiment to see how fast I could build the mono blue tempo deck and the answer is about five days playing two to three hours a day for anyone wondering now this particular hand is not keepable too many late game cards, so we'll draw again. This is not a fantastic hand, but it's doable. Because it has a lot of catch up in it, in the Fire Blast and also the uh, Disciple. I may end up going for a Disciple on turn 3 into a Ramgath, we'll see. New Horizons, yeah, I think that's the... That would in fact be the plan. Phoenix is very good against Corruption Wisdom. So, that's a good draw. Mesmerizing Spirit. Uh, discard Dragon, actually. I don't think Dragon's going to be useful here. So what we'll do is we'll just play Disciple, see how he responds to this. I don't actually plan on activating it next turn, but he may remove this thing just to save his Mesmerizing. We'll see. Because if he Noxious Fumes, this... Uh, Disciple, it means my Ram Geth gets in damage and might not be removed. What would be a good draw is actually a shoe drop. If I could draw like a Fia, that'd be really nice because uh, it means I could go activate Fia instead of Ram Geth. Making me discard again. Is Fire Blast better here? Flash Freeze? No Flash Freeze. Hmm. So. Hmm. Because I'm low on cards, I think what I'm going to do is play Gibbo, and then just pass. Also, the game sounds a bit loud. Yeah, due to, um, yeah, because my computer crashed with Spell Weaver Open, it actually reset everything, which is very annoying. Oh, this is annoying. Uh, I guess get rid of the Fire Blasts. If he has another one, this is really bad for me. He may have just drawn all the discard in the universe, which would be very irritating. I want to get Phoenix down before that. I do have some very powerful top decks against him, like four Phoenixes in the deck and such, but... I'd be down to one Ramgath in the entire deck. And, yeah. Oh, wow, he's trading both. Alright, that's fine with me. Because he has to do... Yeah, because of the Disciple. This is enough of a threat that he has to just trade everything. Disquisitive. That is fine. I can go Phoenix here. And just pass. The chances of him having another discard spell are pretty low. Especially, he won't play a Splitting Headache when I only have one card in hand. He might, he, if he has a Mesmerizing, he has two Mesmerizing left in his deck out of 50 cards. Uh, so if he plays another one, that's just unfortunate. But he won't play Splitting Headache with one card in my hand, or at least he shouldn't. Vulture. Okay, so he's going to pump this twice. Interesting. Next turn, we're just going to go Ramgath and attack him. He can block damage with this. 
Oh, never mind. We'll send back the Ramgath, and we will uh, fire blast this board. This is this fire blast is too good. Yeah, that fire blast was way too good. Uh, so, yeah. Whereas Ramgath would have just got in two extra damage, whereas this just removes this board completely. I can play to the late game because while it looks like I'm super far behind on card advantage, I do have two red dragons in the deck. I think since. No, only one, because uh, I discarded one earlier. Word of pain, interesting. I'll just ping him end of turn. I can deal some pretty hefty damage uh, as the game goes on. Because he's playing discard, I'm just going to throw out the dragon fire if I don't have another play next turn. Vulture, he has to activate it, otherwise he's going to get pinged. Okay. So, end of turn, ping his face. And then I'll just dragon fire. Because he's playing splitting headaches, which means he just splitting headache me, and then I lose a bunch of damage for no reason. Uh, he could be using Infernal Tribute, so as a result, I will ping now. Because if he Infernal Tributes me, I get, one f I get the Phoenix back. But I lose my disciple. The other thing is he probably has drawn removal for this disciple at this point. That and he's played a lot of his one HP guys. Next turn, is there any draws I can get that are lethal? Uh, Dragonfire is, and that's a splitting headache because he's trying to get rid of a burn spell. But it was just a shrine. Yeah, this game kind of showcases that I don't need an aggressive start to win. Like, a lot of this stuff is from being milled. Like, if you look at the goblins and such, you didn't actually play them this game. My first play was actually Disciple of Zash. <laughs> but that's because this deck isn't actually that aggressive, which means I can get away with these slower starts. Now, the problem I have is this Infernal Vulture. How many creatures in my graveyard? Five. How many creatures? Are there? Six. Alright, so you can pump it six times, dealing 11 damage, which is too much. He's dead to Ram, Gath, and Dragonfire. Uh, Gibber and Ronnie isn't actually that bad. I think I have to leave Phoenix on defense, though, so it's like... I can't really risk anything like this. This is going to be a close game because this uh, vulture is very hard to deal with. The thing about Phoenix is that it's almost impossible for him to actually kill. Like, properly. He needs to double knock, it seems it. And if he does, then he's down to no cards and I can infinitely chump block those. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting game. It's very dependent on his draws. Let's see what he does here. If he just pumps it, he could pump it six times if he really wanted to. It's a 6-6 six, six currently. The reason he pumped it is because uh, it plays around Dragonfire, but he's dead to Dragonfire, so. Maybe he's got Flash Freeze. Uh, that actually kills the Vulture. Or it kills him. I'll go for the potential lethal. He needs double flash freeze. Okay, so I win. Yeah, he needs double he needed double flash freeze, which is very unlikely, so. Dragon fire to the rescue. I said uh, earlier you actually just need two. That's why I don't play four, because you usually draw two if you're playing three anyway. And my camera has stopped again! <laughs> Why? Why does this camera? Alright, so we are going to play one more game since we're currently at 24 minutes. That was a uh, 10 minute game, so we'll try and play one more game. If the queue goes to more than a minute though, then I won't. But um, maybe we actually rematch against the same guy, do like a mini best of three, that'd be cool. But uh, this deck in general is a bit strange because it's red by nature. Uh, I think Someone on stream actually called it sensible 
<laughs> Sensible Smork, which was funny. <laughs> For anyone who knows um, Twitch emotes, the uh, the Smork go face thing. So this is the Sensible Smork, uh, which I I guess you could you could sort of word it as it's definitely not control though. It's definitely not a control deck. Okay, it is the same guy, which means we get to play best of three, sort of. This is a very good hand. This is a very, very aggressive hand. As I said, it's not a control deck. It's a mid-range deck. It has aggressive openings, but it also has a late-game feel to it, which is interesting because it's, it's a red deck by nature, which means it can have very, very aggressive openings, but the aggressive openings it has, I think this is the single most explosive opening I can get which is going second double game run running because I don't have I don't have four extra one drops I only have the uh, I only have the four one drops which means that like I don't have these really really fast openings where I just get uh, three one drops or something like triple lizard I don't have those openings Now, in this case, he's actually in trouble because I drew the best draw I can get going second. Which is double Gibber and Ronnie, Fire Blast, Dragonfire. I think that's seriously the best opening I can get. <laughs> I would not be surprised if I could not figure out a better one. I'm just attacking him. I, normally, I'd word to fire this, but I want to play a second Gibber. If he plays another discard effect, my priority is I'll discard Fire Blast and then probably the Rage Shrine. If he goes double splitting headache, I'm just keeping Dragonfire. Okay, he didn't. Alright, so we've got plenty of damage, that's always nice. We're gonna Word of Fire and then Fireball. Because while I'm losing a bunch of damage in burn, I get 8 extra damage in here. This is going to be a very, very quick game. Yeah, as I said when I was doing the deck tech, this is not a control deck. It does have very fast openings sometimes. Although, I'm actually quite happy that I got to play two games uh, against the same guy. Because the first game shows the more controlling aspect of it, and the second game shows the more aggro as uh, side of it. So, that's a good sort of... Uh, two games to showcase the different size that this deck can actually take depending on its draw. And that means he's dead. Okay. So yeah, very, very fast opening. Uh, by the looks of it, went on turn five. Yeah. So anyway, that is the deck, and we uh, get... 350 gold at the end of that. Woo! <laughs> anyway, so that is my mid-range rage deck. As far as crafting costs go, it's about average uh, for rage. You got your word of fires, Fia, Ramgath, fire blasts, a couple extra fire blasts. So it's, in fact, I think I have a standard rage deck over here to compare to. No Flame Serpents, so it's a little bit over the standard cost, but not by much. As I said, Red Dragons, you can cut down to one, you get one for free. So it's actually not that much above the cost of a standard Rage deck, and so as a result, it's not that much of a stretch to build. If you enjoy playing Rage, I would suggest you try something like this out. Uh, but anyway, thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback or just want to ask any questions about the deck, put it in the comment section below. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'll be, tuning, I'll be putting two screenshots in the description showing the deck in a uh, nice to look at manner, which means I'll be using this screen and not the edit deck screen, because that's a bit harder to read. But anyway, Alex Nalysip and Jotto, signing off.